Hi, I'm Natalie Ryan Hebert. I'm founder of the Red Tent Program for Premenstrual Dysphoria, and I'm here with one of my lovely clients today, Mary, who did the Red Tent, Pro Red Tent Program last year. So it's been quite a while. Many months, many moons have gone by, mm -hmm. and she's kindly volunteered to speak today about her experience. So hi, Mary. Thanks so much. Hi. Nice to see you. Yeah. So for those who you know, don't really know what the whole experience of the Red Tent is about, I want you to just begin with your own story, where you were at in your life and what drew you to start working with me. So. Okay. So I, uh, my, the period, periods before my menstrual cycle have always been a struggle for me for years and years and years. And it took me a really long time, a really long time in hindsight, it feels like I should have been able to put those pieces of the puzzle together sooner to realize that my experience was not a typical experience. Um, so after years and years of suffering really, where every single month I would have at least 10 days, sometimes closer to 13, 14 days of just turning into, the best way I can describe it is to turning into someone I did not recognize. Um, I just felt like a completely different person every single month. Um, one that sometimes couldn't do really simple tasks, just like getting dressed or brushing my teeth. Just everything seemed completely overwhelming and paralyzing. Um, and again, in hindsight, it seems like I should have been able to figure that out sooner or taken some action to do something about it. Uh, but it took me a really long time to kind of to figure it out and realize it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I finally got to a point where I realized if I didn't do something, I, I'm married, I have two children. My husband is wonderful and amazing and incredibly understanding. But I think I got to a point where I realized if I didn't do something to shift this, I, I could wind up, you know, divorced perhaps in, in a certain number of years because I, it's just too much of a roller coaster. It'd become too much of a roller coaster. Even the most understanding, wonderful, loving partner um, has their limit. I used to say it's, you know, there's only a certain number of times you can break a plate and glue it yeah. back together again before mm -hmm. it's just a pile of glue and and dust you know um yeah so i completely that was how it was for me too i had my partner's also wonderful and i just couldn't stand how much of a mess i was making of this yeah. otherwise beautiful relationship so i really understand um understand the motivation there also for your children but the relationship i think it's the, the one he's the one closest that gets the real brunt of all of yep. the yeah you thought i've got to do something about it and how did you come across um me and the work that i'm that i do so i think i was on instagram actually and i just searched the hashtag pmdd mm -hmm. and your instagram came up and i started looking into it and i thought that sounded promising and i was you know willing to to try to try something new to try something different um, to see, you know, I, I just reached a point where I, I can't do this any longer. Mm -hmm. So I think I reached out to you and we had an interview and you made me feel really, really comfortable immediately. I just felt at ease and I, you know, I feel like you have a gut feeling about things and I just thought this, this is something I want to try. What did you try before? Cause you know, if you're like me and I know you were, I mean, and so many women who are probably watching this thing, I've tried everything we know. So what did you try? I do feel like I've tried everything <laughs> I, or had tried everything. I, I mean, I'm a pretty healthy person. I've mm -hmm. always eaten really well. I've always exercised. I take care of myself. I get good sleep. I don't really have any vices. I don't really drink. I don't do drugs. I don't like, so I, I live a healthy lifestyle for one. I've mm -hmm. seen uh, many different therapists from the time I was 18, I think up until uh, you know my 30s. Mm -hmm. uh, I've tried medications, tried meditation, I've tried I've tried everything. Um, well, not everything, but you know I've tried a lot, a lot, a lot of things and I just felt like 
I would get some momentum going for a little while, but then it would always come back to this same cycle of just dipping down so low each month that it's like you get this ball rolling and then all of a sudden you find yourself back to square one again, despite doing all the right things. And it's exhausting and it's so disappointing too. And you start to feel, um, it's not just that period itself that's that's difficult. It's also the aftermath of cleaning up the mess that you make in those times where you haven't been yourself. Oh and yeah. The dread of it coming too, knowing that this is coming for me in a couple of weeks, you know, and that's just, it's the, that's exhausting too, isn't it? Oh, so exhausting. And again, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Looking back, I, th I think about like conflicts that I've had with different people. I remember in particular, like a fight that I got into with my mother and we're very, very close. Me just blowing up and looking back, I, you know, I know exactly what was going on. Mm. Um, so yeah, I was just done, done with that roller coaster after trying everything and really taking good care of myself and nothing yeah. really was working. Then you, then you found me on Instagram and then we had the chat. So then you joined the Red Tent program. And now tell me your experience. Or I know your experience, but tell the people watching your experience of the Red Tent and, and what, what it's like. I guess if I'm being honest, I didn't know if it was going to work. You know, yeah. I didn't know if it was going to work and I didn't know what that was going to look like. And I remember, I think in that first session, you had me uh, you know, we did the, the, I close my eyes and I'm going down the staircase and I, having my, me hold my two arms up, I think. Yeah. And one was like, I was holding a balloon and the other, I had a heavy bucket. Yeah. And I immediately, when my arms just without me doing anything, did this lifting and this falling, I felt a little bit amazed. Yeah. Um, and so I think immediately I just went into the space of, okay, this is something that is going to work. You know, I just felt in my, in my gut that this was going to work because I, I didn't do that. I, you know, I didn't. Yeah. It's your subconscious mind doing it for you. And you're yeah. going, whoa, there really is a heavy bucket and a balloon. And that's just this little sort of suggestibility test that we do. But it's also very powerful for you to experience it because it, it does give you that. <gasps> Something's really happening that's not just my conscious mind. And my conscious mind's been trying to fix this for decades now. Yeah. Now another part of me is in the game and that's a, a powerful feeling isn't it I think yeah is, yeah absolutely and i think some things some things came up that i didn't expect mm -hmm. um some memories and you know when you and i walked through them and talked through them and made some connections i think even one came up that you were like i'm not sure what this is like what how this connects to everything mm -hmm. but then when we talked through it um you were like, oh, that makes total sense. And it, you know, it made sense for me. I think it was something about not having my mother around or something like that in, in a moment in my childhood. Yeah. But it, it was pretty amazing to see how these things that happened so long ago mm. are still affecting you today. Yeah. Uh, and, and when you work through it, this lift, you know, this lift, this heavy weight comes off, which is amazing. I'm like the guide, but it's not me going, do you know what I think is wrong with you? I think it's this. It's, yeah, it's your understanding that frees you. So when we were looking over those scenes, and sometimes it, it is like that for me, I'm like, hmm, I don't quite see how that third scene ties in. But your subconscious mind was the one that's given it to you. Right. So you're still in hypnosis. And when we say, okay, so when you've got to put it all together now, be a detective, put it all together. And yeah. your subconscious mind is there to show you how, it, how that puzzle is put together and why it's still affecting you today and you are telling yourself what the issue is yeah and that's where and it's this deep inner knowledge and this wisdom that you have and that's the thing that's freeing you i say that to my clients all the time you're the hero in this story you're the one that's going to rescue yourself i'm just going to facilitate this rescue mission yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. actually going to be you and it is that isn't it it's an absolute you go and save that little girl you have become a loving parent to that little child inside of you and yeah. that's the love you've been waiting for and i mean it's hard yeah. to explain. it all sounds so out there when you're actually you know hearing about it for the first time but it's really yeah. you know, a life-changing experience well, and that experience of looking at yourself as a child, and I think that you had me actually imagine, imagining myself, my adult self, holding myself as a child. Yeah. 
Yeah. And showing that same love to myself that I would show to my own children was incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful. Yeah. And then having, I still have my screensaver, <laughs> my yeah. little childhood self on my screensaver saying I am enough and just, it, yeah, I, that was hugely powerful for me. The group element, how did you find that? Because obviously we have our one-on-one -on -one stuff where we do the RTT together and have follow-ups together and you can talk to me over email and messenger as well. So there's that whole one-on-one -on -one thing that we have, but then there's the, the group part where there are other women all around the world, you know, five of you at a time going through this similar journey. How did you find that part of it? I think for so long, I felt so alone in this experience and mm. trying to explain what my experience was every month, I think, I, you know, I would try to explain it to my husband all the time. Like, you just don't understand. You just don't understand. And then all of a sudden I find myself in this group of women that know exactly what I'm feeling. Mm. Uh, just felt really nice and made me feel less alone and made me feel like I'm not crazy, you know? Yeah. Um, so I thought that was, that was really great. So what changes did you begin to notice and, and what's, and, and has it stayed with you? And it's been a while um, and I haven't spoken to you for, I don't even know what you're going to say to this. <laughs> <laughs> How's it been? How was it? What did you notice changed and, and how are things now? I'm, I'm kind of at a loss for words because it's been, it's just been incredible. I mean, my symptoms have all but disappeared and little things, you know, creep in but I think that's just typical for for every woman uh during the time of your menstrual cycle yeah but I so I actually after all of this was done I decided to get certified to become a yoga instructor which is something I have talked about doing for 20 years and I just feel like I never had the confidence to do it and so I went ahead and went through this program and during the week that would be leading up to my menstrual cycle. That was the culmination of my whole program. And so I had, I had to study for this huge exam. I had to do uh, a live uh, teaching yoga. There was like just all these things that were culminating during that week. And I, like, you wouldn't even have known that I was coming up to my period, which like thinking about that now is, mind-blowing for me like I it was just a, not even a blip and I feel like that has been every month you know during that week there's been all these things going on where normally I maybe would have been stuck in bed not even able to get out of bed not even able to make eye contact with people in my own household like that's how debilitating it was for me wow. yeah and and now I I mean even right now with everything that is going on in the world you know, things are crazy right now. Uh, my husband owns his own small business, which is completely shut down. So things are really uncertain for us. Yeah. And I just, I'm just rolling right through. Like everything is fine. So it's, I mean, it has been a complete shift in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that a lot, actually. A lot of who, women who are in the program at the moment saying, thank goodness that I yeah. this now because I don't want to think about because Corona just kind of kicked off when yeah. them, when the yeah. real tent them just started recently so they just said oh i would be in a completely different i would yeah. slide myself and and i've had a few messages from people from other women who've been through the program like you saying the same thing saying this is i'm just present i'm in the moment i just know that well you know would it help to worry would it actually help and yeah to know that right away that that's never going to get me the solution that I think I'm going to get and just yeah. all the stuff you learn just becomes embedded in you doesn't it it's becomes oh, yeah. part of you. you're a different person at the end but you're not the same yeah um, yeah and we do that self-assessment too where we take the numbers and I remember yours were you know like most women who begin the program like self self-esteem and self-worth premenstrual is down at like a one or something and then by the end of the program it's a nine out of ten and yeah um, negative self-talk is up at about an eight or nine and it comes down to a zero at the end of the program and anxiety as well too it's really high mostly for, for a lot of women and that also just drops down to nothing suicidal thinking 
yeah. um, is often a thing with premenstrual dysphoria and that always just that's always down to zero there's never one who says yeah there's still a little bit it's like oh never I could never yeah. Think, yeah. um yeah it just sort of something completely changes when you pull out that I'm not enough wound of mm -hmm. thorn because that's what it kind of is isn't it I think oh yeah yeah it's just this unworthiness that you're stuck with and you just don't quite know how to get it out um, yeah once you get rid of that everything upgrades in your whole life you know confident enough to say i'm going to go do teacher training why wouldn't i you know yeah. what's, what's stopping me um whereas before you can feel all this resistance telling you no you're not good enough and who are you to do that and it's going to be too hard for you or whatever yeah, yeah so cool no, it's been incredible. I mean, I, it's it's actually kind of unbelievable mm -hmm. from where I was before and where I am now. And and I don't I don't have any fear that I will go back to that place. I, I'm a changed person. So yeah, exactly. You built yourself up again from a foundation that's so strong. You yeah. can't really be knocked over. It's I feel the same way. I have no fear of ever going back to to how I used to be before. It's just like a turn a page it's a new chapter everything's um, yeah. just different a new brain you have you literally do oh, yeah. have a new brain yeah. rewired it completely um so so yeah and i know that for some women the investment in the program is like especially when the self-worth's not so high it's tricky for it's a tricky position to be in because you don't believe you're worth much so how mm. can you invest to save yourself <laughs> and that's wow. the that's a real hurdle for a lot of women to jump over. You know, if, if their pet was needed an operation and the vet bill was a similar amount, they'd say, oh, here, have my credit card, save my yeah, pet. Yeah. But if it's about saving yourself, it's just like, yeah, I don't know if I can. So, you know, what, what has it been worth to you? Just do it. <laughs> just do it. Just make the investment. I, I can't. I, you know, I don't have many regrets, but I wish I had done something. I wish I had done this sooner um, mm -hmm. because I feel like I would have some years of my life back that were a lot of suffering. Mm -hmm. um, so you just, you can't put a price tag on that. You just can't. It's your life and you only get one, you know, that we know of at least, at least yeah. as, <laughs> as far as we know. So, you know, and, and you don't get those days back. And every, yeah. day, every month that you carry on suffering, it's just another month that's gone. It's another, it's another wound in your relationship that you've, then you're going to have to patch up later. You know, it's so, yeah, it, it really is. It's just, it's a no brainer compared to the investment compared to, to what you get is priceless. Um, yeah. yeah. And not only, I mean, for yourself, obviously that's, it's, you're doing it for yourself, but for women that are having a hard time, like you said, like you would do it for your pet or your child, but you are doing it for your, your family. You're doing it for your partner or your children or whoever your loved ones are that are in your life um, because it affects them too. Absolutely does. And I always, you know, this is the stuff that we're working on. It is generational trauma. We mm -hmm. pick stuff up from, and in your case, not, not so much, but it, there were things that you made to interpretations that were just misinterpretations of a, of a very small child. But yeah. in some, you know, there's, there'll be a lot of anger from a parent or a, a, perhaps a parent, a mother who's very depressed all the time. And then the child comes to think, well, that's because I'm not making mummy happy. So it must yeah. be that I'm not good enough. And so this, this stuff kind of just keeps getting passed down until someone stops and says, this is going to stop with me now. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to face myself and everything that I've been running from um, because it does get passed down. You, we don't mean it to, oh, we yeah. really don't want it to. But, but when that um, hormonal shift happens and all the pain surfaces, it kind of just possesses you and turns you into someone you'd rather not be. And then you're making wounds in your children that they're going to have to fix. Yeah. So, you know, there's that great quote, what was it now that, um, if you don't heal, if you don't heal your wounds, then you're going to bleed on people who didn't cut you. So yeah. it is, it's this responsibility to, to realize, look, I didn't, I'm not the one who created these wounds, but I'm really the only one who can, who can, who can heal them. Yeah. 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 And actually another huge realization is that we are the ones who create our own wounds. 
in mm -hmm. a kind of roundabout way because yeah. it's our own abandonment of ourselves when we say that must mean i'm not good enough when something happens it's your own appraisal of yourself and now you've lost your own love that's yeah. the wound and i don't think that it took me a long time to realize that oh it wasn't that my dad didn't love me so now i'm wounded it's that when he couldn't love me the way i needed to be loved i assumed it was because there was something faulty in me yeah yeah that's how it gets and so it's my own appraisal of not good enough that's created the wound yep imagine you run into a woman or you run into your previous self at mm -hmm. the age of i don't know 30 or something if you could give another woman any advice a woman who, with premenstrual dysphoria what would you what advice would you give her based on what you know now i cannot express enough how life-changing this has been for me i mean i don't recognize that woman that i was for so many years uh, she's just not there anymore so uh, i would say to reach out to you and to go through the program and to trust in the process because it works. Pleasure. It's the best job in the world, you know, to have gone through all of that crap myself and then to have healed and then to actually know what to do. Yeah. To, to well, and I, think, I think too, I remember you saying something at one point that, you know, uh, this, this struggle that us women go through that, that have this thing, um, it's also your gift. And mm -hmm. That has been very true for me. I mean, I know that while all of those years were so hard, but when you come through it, you come to realize that, you know, this sensitivity that you have, this is, is also your gift. And if you can heal the trauma, then all you're left is the, with is this yeah. sensitivity. So you're not feeling your own pain all the time once you heal those wounds over, then, yeah. you're, just, then you're just nice and feely. And that's yeah. a good yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mary, for sharing your story. I'm sure you're going to inspire so many. Um, oh, you're welcome. Yeah, so thank you so much. And um, yeah, I might see you again soon. <laughs>